Pastor Al, First Baptist Church of Bernalillo. I've worked from the house today, so my lighting might be a little bit off, but y'all just bear with me, okay? Let's get into our word for the day. Our word for today is accountability. Accountability. Um, our, our verse for today is Romans 14, verse 12, and it says, so even each of us will give an account of himself to God. And I believe as we've talked about, uh, we started the book of Revelation Sunday, and we got to talking about, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago, we were talking about having to stand before Jesus and give an account. We will have to give an account, uh, both Christians and non-believers. Uh, we will all be standing before the judge. Uh, one is the Bema seat, the other is the great white throne. But I believe we need to start thinking about accountability today, not so much as far as when we get to heaven. Um you know, a lot of people say, well, the accountability comes in with the big sins, and that's not necessarily true. James chapter 4, verse 17 tells us, so what are, whoever knows the, the right thing to do and fails to do it, for him it is sin. So our position as Christians to manifest Jesus, to be that Galatians 2.20 uh, Christian, to fulfill his purpose here on this earth today, if we're not doing the things that he's asked us to do, the good things, um, we're going to be held accountable for that. Uh, nobody's innocent. We know that from Romans 3.23, for all of sin comes short of the glory of God. We all have sin, and we all are going to have to give an account for what we do. Now, once you accept Jesus as your Savior, your sins have been forgiven. But you're still accountable for your actions, uh, your words. Uh, your words may come back to haunt you. Uh, I know some Christians that use words. I don't know that they would use those words around Jesus, but He's keeping a record of them. And Matthew chapter 12, verses 36 to 37 says, I tell you, on the day of judgment, people will give an account for every careless word they speak. For by your words, you will be justified, and by your words, you will be condemned. So we need to be careful about the words we use. And like I said, everything we're doing, God is keeping a record, especially those that have not been forgiven by the grace of God. In Revelation chapter 20, there at the great white throne, it says, uh, verse 12, it says, I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and the books were open. Then another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged by what was written in the books according to what they had done. Every little thing. If you're not a child of God, every little thing you've ever done that's wrong will be, there will be a record of it, and you will uh, be asked about it, and we'll have to pay the penalty for that. You can't hide. Uh, a lot of people think that they can hide, you know, Adam and Eve went there in the Garden of Eden. And once they had sinned, they knew they had sinned, they ran and hid. Uh, Hebrews 4 verse 13 says, and no creature is hidden from his sight, but all are naked and exposed to the eyes of him who we must give an account. So you can't hide, you can't, you know, everybody, there's a lot of people that try to hide their sin. They, you know, we could. People call them closet sins or whatnot. You can't hide them from God. He sees everything. He knows all. Um, you know, if you find yourself, especially as a believer, you find yourself in sin, you're being held accountable for those things um, as far as your actions. Uh, ask for help. Ask the Lord for help. In 1 John 1, 9, it says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And not only that, but we should ask a friend. In James chapter 5, verse 16, it says, Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. So we have no excuse. We will be held accountable. We can ask the Lord to help us, and we can ask a friend to help us. Um, and you know, I'm not saying you need to, gossip and go looking for trouble and things like that but if you find yourself in trouble um and you're having troubles with sin go to a brother i've told you many times find somebody you can have as an accountability brother or sister for the ladies and and talk things through uh don't tickle people's ears sometimes it's hard proverbs 27 17 iron sharpens iron and and one man sharpens another um Andy showed me this one time. I'd read it before, but, um, you know, we we both try to help one another, and we hold each other accountable, and and we call each other if we need to, to, to talk about things. 
but we do need to be have accountability partners. So make sure you're doing that. Uh, also, I've had people ask me, are we our brother's keepers? Or do we, you know, am I responsible for such and such? And, you know, Galatians 6 verse 1 says, brothers, if anyone is caught up in transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spiritual, a spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. Uh, you know, we got to watch what we're doing, but we need to help our brothers if they're having troubles and, and try to encourage them. Uh, First Thessalonians said, I don't have much after here. Therefore, encourage one another and build uh, one another up just as you are doing. We need to make sure that as we help, that we encourage others. Um, another thing that I have found that makes things e easy, I preached on uh, making the connection here two weeks ago and the Lord's Prayer and everything, and we, we need to put our eyes on heaven, the things above. Uh, Colossians 3 verses 1 and 2 says, if, if then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above and not on things of the earth. And, you know, that's one of the, the, the challenges we have because we are here on earth. And it's easy to get our eyes on all the craziness that's going on. But we have to be careful and realize that we will be held accountable. Make sure before you lash out at somebody or just get crazy uh, that you're thinking about what you're doing. Is that what happens in the streets of heaven? Or are we going to be doing those things here? Let's make sure that we understand we are being held accountable. See, the Lord knows your heart. He knows exactly where your heart is. He knows exactly uh, where your eyes are. Uh, are they on the things above? Is, uh, you know, kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven? Is that our heart? Jeremiah 17, 9 says, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? Uh, the King James there it says is desperately wicked. And we see the wickedness of today's time and, and the things that we see going on. But where's your heart? Has your affections been placed on things above? Verse 10 of there, Jeremiah 17 says, I, the Lord, search the heart and test the mind to give every man according to his way, according to the fruit of his deeds. We're going to be held accountable. What our heart is, okay? Our heart will eventually bring out action. So as we look at our verse today, verse uh, Romans 14, verse 12, so then each of us will give an account to, of, our, of himself to God. Are you ready to stand before God and explain your life and the things that you're doing, the things that you're okay with, the things that you let go aside? You remember we talked about James there. He said, he that knows to do good and does it not, to him it is sin. There's a lot of th times it's not that you're going out doing the big sins. It's that you're not doing what he's asked you to do. Uh, we're to be accountable for the righteousness in which God has given us. We talked the last two days. We talked about timing and we talked about preparing. We're to prepare ourselves and be ready to meet uh, the Lord in the air. We're, to, uh, we're his bride. We're to make sure we are uh, making sure that our, our righteousness and our robes of righteousness are white as in the snow. And are we doing that? We will be held accountable for that. So attitude adjustment, let us be accountable to Jesus and to one another. I believe that we can help one another and we can um, iron sharpen iron there as we read in Proverbs. But I'm looking forward to seeing Jesus in the sky. And it could, it could happen today. Um, I look forward every day. And, you know, I'm going to have to give an account. So I pray that my actions every day, every step of the way that I'm checking, my eyes, making sure they're on things above, amen, not on the things of this earth, and that as I'm waiting on Jesus to return, I'm doing everything in my power to prepare, and the time could be now, so let's be accountable for our actions. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much that you have forgiven us of our sins, and uh, Lord, I pray that we would be mindful of the things we say and do as your children, as your bride, and I pray, Lord, that you would uh, help us keep our eyes on the things we should and, and to keep our heart on you, loving you, trying to make you smile. And Lord, uh, that we would help one another 
more than what we do. And uh, not to beat a brother down, but Lord, to help them and to encourage them. And, and Lord, uh, to, to grow together and learn your word and be prepared for what is ahead. I look forward to spending eternity with you. But Lord, I pray that you'd help us to have a little heaven here on earth. We know that it's here. Uh, you're here through us, the Holy Spirit. And I pray that we would do everything in our power to bring more people to you. I ask all this in your precious, precious son's name. Amen. Uh, Y'all come back tomorrow and we'll have another word tomorrow. Y'all be, be safe and uh, I'll see you tomorrow.